Let's start off with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, we come before you today on this beautiful day, and thank you that we have this opportunity to gather together to uh, just praise you and to be instructed and uh, taught through your word. We pray, Lord, that today that you would guide every word that is said, that you would meet the needs according to your spirit, and that uh, you would just bless our time together, and that you just help it to be a, a great time as we rejoice in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Standing in the shadows on facing clouds, I put my hope in God. It is possible to him who believes this is life. On my knees, my face to your throne And I know I'm not alone I'm facing shadows in this life I put my hope in your word I'm facing shadows in this life I put my hope in your word Not every day is graced with a silver lining How would I know that I could face the pleasure with the pain Don't know if you can dance till you dance in the rain I'm facing shadows Hope in your word I'm facing shadows In this life I put my hope in your word I'm facing shadows in this life I put my hope in your words I'm facing shadows I put my hope in your word Ooh. You all I need, you all I need Ooh. Ooh. Amen you guys can take a seat if you want to. Yeah, go ahead and have a seat. Love I 
head for you. Breathe, breathe, breathe your spirit into me. In the night, turns to day in your presence through the night. Turns to day. Oh, in the night turns to day And peace will come only as I walk in your light Walk in your light, walk in your light In the night turns to day You know, all these songs have stories behind them. And this next one, basically in uh, one of the, the epistles, Paul says that he was willing to become a fool for Christ's sake. And really what that means is that in our Christian faith, you know, a lot of times we get embarrassed or we're intimidated to stand up for Christ. And a willingness to be made a fool means that you're, you're willing to do anything so that people will just see that Jesus is real. And also the song talks about how there are certain lines that we place, like we're, we're willing to go so far with the Lord, but we're not really quite willing to go that extra mile. But you know, but Jesus calls us to be sold out for him. So this next song is about just being sold out and being willing to be even made to look a fool for the sake of Christ. To the unknown, though reluctantly I go past the limits of my comfort zone, fertile soil, so that I will grow. Help my unwillingness to play the fool, the court to jest, soak the furnace with your fire. Knowing you is my desire Help my unwillingness To play the fool, the court to jest Soak the furnace with your fire Knowing you is my desire Willing to gain, though to me it seems insane. Broken vessel, the water to hold, will one day he walk on streets of gold. 
felt my unwillingness to play the fool, the court to dress, soak the furnace with your fire, knowing you is my desire. Help my unwillingness to play the fool, the court to dress, soak the furnace with your fire, knowing you. To play the fool, the court to jest, stoke the furnace with your fire, knowing you is my desire. Help my unwillingness to play the fool, the court to jest, stoke the furnace with your fire, knowing you is my desire. Okay, now it's going to get interesting. <laughs> and these guys are going to be uh, leading the, uh, the clapping. The clap. so follow the, our clapping leaders We usually start here. with this song, so this should get interesting. Okay, you ready? There you go. One, two, three.
inside of me Come with me Let us see Come with me Let us see Now I'm going to pass out. <laughs> Is that great stuff? Awesome. Stand up and greet one another. Hello? 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 Shalom. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Shalom. No turning back. What, now or the song? <laughs> Which one, Kenny? Hi. Which one, Kenny? can't hear you. Oh, yeah. He's got a hard one. Okay. He wants to know which one. No, which one? No, the new one. Yeah. The new one? Just because nobody's really too sure. Let's do all the way to the same. Do what? All the way to the same. Okay. That way. Fighting. We're going to do all the same. Opa, okay. Double line with the mortal. Better say it's always the same. Good job. First, we'll have the long one. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Creekside. Another beautiful morning here. And uh, we are very blessed this morning. We have uh, Pastor Michael from Transport for Christ is going to be teaching this morning. And he brought these guys with him. They're called Ageless. Now, uh, let's have a vote. How many of you would like to keep them permanently? <laughs> it works for us, I mean. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what a blessing to have them here this morning. A couple of brief announcements uh, coming up, uh, and actually I think uh, Pastor Michael will probably announce this too, is um, The Kingdom, a rock musical. That's May 1st at the Grove Theater in Upland. And I know some of you are looking at the price saying $35 is kind of high, but uh, keep in mind this is a fundraiser for Transport for Christ and uh, fantastic ministry. Um, they don't do this often, and if at all possible, we should uh, support them. It's a, from what I understand, I haven't seen it myself, but I understand it's a great uh, uh, musical, a great play, and the funds are definitely going to a good cause. So that's May 1st, and uh, I think we'll have, uh, a little later, we'll have a little video uh, to introduce that to you. Uh, and I think we might have a video on Transport for Christ as well, if we can get it working. So pray for the technology. Uh, other than that, also, uh, also May 1st um, is the National Day of Prayer. 
And of course, uh, there's some flyers out at the front. You may have gotten one in your bulletin. Uh, be sure and hang on to these and kind of use these as a, as a little guideline. Uh, we do want to take advantage of that. Um, anybody think our nation needs a little prayer right now? Yeah. So the day of prayer is kind of a time to focus on that, but we really need to be praying for our nation every day. Uh, we need to pray for our leaders and uh, those who have authority over us and uh, pray for their salvation. So with that, let's go ahead and have the ushers come forward. We'll receive this morning's tithes and offerings. If you are visiting today, this is not necessarily for you. This is for those of us that call Creekside home. If you feel led to give, uh, by all means do, but please do not feel obligated. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord. Uh, you bless us in so many ways. Uh, you've blessed us this morning with a, a beautiful day. Every, every Sunday we come together, you give us these, just this beautiful weather, this beautiful time to, to worship you. And uh, you've given us this wonderful worship team this morning to, to lead us to your throne, Lord. And uh, as we spend a little time there, we want to return a small portion to you. Uh, we ask that you would give us wisdom to use these funds to further your kingdom and glorify you here at Creekside. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Seas that call in my name It's 
track your spirit is always the same you're always the same always the same that's why i love you always the same always the same Wasn't that great? Yeah. All right. I'm with Tony. I think we're going to figure out a way to keep them from uh, getting in their cars. We'll uh, flatten the tires and uh, we'll keep them here somehow. But what a blessing. Thank you, guys. It was a blessing. Amen. Well, this morning we have an added blessing. So we're looking forward to its uh, transports for Christ. Uh, Mike Dubay and his wife Susan and of course they brought this wonderful praise and worship team with them and uh, we are totally blessed this morning to have them. Pa I've uh, talked with Pastor Mike many times of course those of you who are here that have received some of the frozen food and some of the food handouts that we have uh, gathered hey, they came from Transports for Christ. Sometimes the truckers come in and they have a load that they have not been able to deliver or something has happened whatever it is they come out with extras and uh, mike gets on the horn gives us a call gives some others a call and before you know it we have thousands of pounds of frozen chicken and cream pies and oh you name it we have everything but uh it's uh mike has been very instrumental in that so uh we support them 100 percent they do an absolute amazing job with the truckers that are on long haul they find themselves halfway across the country and uh on a sunday what do you do well they provide the word of god right there at transports for christ right at the ontario truck america truck stop and uh what a blessing that is and i understand you're also you also have your own radio station there now right what is it, 87, <clears throat> 87.9, is that right? Yes, 87.9. Okay, it's very localized. These are what they call uh, transponders. They're all over the country. And uh, this is one way that K-Wave is being able to be broadcast in some of these little remote places. They probably don't uh, cover more than, you know, about a five or 10 square mile area. But it's enough, when you have a uh, captive audience like the truckers, there are transports for Christ, they're gonna turn on their, their uh, FM radios and that's gonna come in and blast them out right there. And I picked it up all the way up to my house. I live almost uh, in Upland, so I've been able to uh, receive it. And it's a, what a blessing. God is doing amazing work with you guys up there. And any way we can help, uh, we'll eat all the food we can get. <laughs> so. <laughs> So anyway, it's a blessing. I would like to pray for Mike. Mike is gonna be giving us a message this morning and telling us more about Transports for Christ. So uh, would you join me in prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for a great privilege of being able to come before you with all of our needs, and Lord, with our, most, of, most of all, Lord, with our praise and worship. It, after all, Lord, it's all about you, and we are so privileged that you've touched us and showed us that you can use us even in our pitiful state lord you're able to redeem us forgive us cleanse our hearts give us a new life and lord uh, the ways that you have used transports for christ we pray that you would continue to use them and bless them in everything that they do for lord they are blessing this community and they are blessing the truckers that are on the road so, Lord, we just ask for your blessings this morning. May your word that you give might go out with power. And, uh, Lord, may we have a heart to receive what you would desire us to receive, to receive. And, Lord, may you be glorified in what you hear this morning. So, Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. And Mike, would you uh, give us uh, give us the word or whatever you want to give us? All right. Thank <laughs> you, God. Pastor Dan. God bless you. Appreciate that. I'm Chaplain Michael, and I've been at the chapel here for uh, five years. I was a volunteer for about 13, and then the Lord called me out of my business that I had for over 20-something years, and in one night called me into full-time ministry. Well, what our goal is here is to actually preach the gospel, lead truck drivers and the trucking ministry to Jesus, and, uh, and help them grow in their faith. Transport for Christ is a a mobile mission. They started out in 1951 with one mobile chapel. We have chapels in Canada. We have chapels in Russia. Uh, we have two in California, this one and one in Sacramento. And then uh, the rest are all over the United States. The majority of the people here are guys. There's over about three and a half million truck drivers, but there's 500,000 women that drive trucks. And uh, what I see when I look at them in their faces, in their eyes, loneliness. When they go home, they feel like they're a stranger. It's kind of hard to build a relationship when you're only home uh, three months, maybe out of a year. So this is a, literally a sanctuary. For a lot of these drivers, this is their church. So obviously this makes this church a little bit more exciting because uh, we deal with uh, people that normally won't go to church. People that don't know we're here are blown away. I and mean, this is the last thing you see in a truck stop is a church. And this is why I think uh, God has blessed us so much. Because I believe if Jesus was here, if he was here physically, I believe these are the type of places he would be. I would not want to be anywhere else. We've seen hundreds, literally hundreds of people give their hearts to Jesus. We were so blessed uh, this a uh, young girl came in the chapel. That was probably about uh, four months ago. She goes, would you mind if I did a little video for you guys? I said, sure. Didn't hear anything for about three months, and all of a sudden she says, hey, check your email. And I uh, checked my email, and that's what she gave us. So it was awesome. We are having a fundraiser on uh, May 1st. It's the first Thursday of the month. And uh, we have to raise funds for our chapel to stay there. So once a year, the Grove Theater uh, literally, we take over the Grove Theater for that night. And uh, it's called The Kingdom, and it's going to be, it's, uh, it's awesome. For some of you younger guys, you may not remember, but way back when they did Jesus Christ Superstar, remember that? Well, this is kind of like that, but it, it's, it's they, they did it right this time. Okay. Hello, I'm Chaplain Michael with Transport for Christ, where missionaries to truck drivers here. Hey, I would like to personally invite you to our night out at the Grove Theater uh, as for the musical play, The Kingdom. Uh, the date is gonna be May the 1st, which is on a Thursday night. Uh, doors open at six o'clock, love to have you. And uh, the tickets, we're getting a good deal on them there. The $35 each, if you come as a couple, that's two for 60. You bring a group of 10 or more, we can definitely give you a discount on that. Uh, I'd like to leave you with about a little over a three minute clip of the play, I think that you really enjoy. It's suitable for everybody, and it's on the death, the resurrection of Christ. So it's a good way to end the season. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call me at 909-374-8356. God bless you guys. Thank you for your support. And we will see you Thursday night, May 1st, at the Grove Theater.
to hear to hear the word of God so let's go ahead and pray Lord we just come before you father Lord we thank you Lord for your love your grace and your mercy Lord we thank you father for um, just what you've done in our lives here Lord father I pray this morning if there's somebody here that doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior maybe they've been coming here just checking it out and um, thinking well do I do I want to join this church well, Lord, we know it's bigger than that, Lord. It's actually not so much joining the church. I mean, there's people join churches every day that never end up going to heaven. But Lord, we pray, Lord, if there's somebody here this morning who's never made a commitment to you, Lord, has never trusted you for their salvation, Lord, that Father, this morning they would see what a disciple is all about and that they would see how we are called, Lord, and what it means to be called. So pray, Lord, as we go over your word this morning, Lord, that. Uh, the lips that speak these words, Father, would come from your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay, get ready, get set, go. That's the name of the message. What does that mean? Get ready, get set, go. We're going to look at two scriptures today. One is Matthew... Uh, well, the first one is going to be Mark chapter 1, verse 16 through 20. And the second one is going to be Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 through 22. So let's start first with uh, Mark chapter 1. Uh, it's interesting that we're going to see Jesus here calling his disciples. And it really gives me a whole lot of hope when I, when I see these individuals that he called. I mean, you know, these are not your normal type of people you think you'd want in your, to be preaching the word of God. Um, fishermen. Uh, I like to acquaint these guys as like truck drivers. Uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're not the most uh, knowledgeable people, although I'll tell you this much. Uh, I've never driven a truck in my life, but I tell you, I have a lot of respect for these guys. Not just their lifestyle, but I mean, what the, the, the brains it takes to do what they got to do in the forti and the fortification. So, you know, these fishermen, uh, they may say, like, yeah, they just catch a couple of fish. Well, it's probably more to fishing than what we think it is. And we did, they didn't have uh, all the equipment that uh, we have now. But anyway, let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 16. And he starts out and he says, as, And as he walked the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Verse 17. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, bending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in a boat with the hired servants and went after him. Now, like I said, name the message, get ready, get set, go. Well, what he does first is he calls you. That's the first thing Christ does. He calls us. Then he gives you tools. Then, after that, he sends you out. But what's going to look at first here, notice when he said, follow me. Um, by the way, what did you guys think of the band? Awesome, right? Yeah. Awesome. Now, could you imagine if the band was saying, uh, we want some people to uh, join our band? Not that they're looking for anybody. I think they don't need anybody else. I think they're great. But the point I want to bring up is when I like I liked the, the Greek version better of follow me. The Greek version actually is different than, what, than how we read it. The Greek word actually is not follow me, it's join me. So when Jesus is calling us, it's more than just follow. It's, it's, he's actually saying, join me. So the point is, can, now like, if they were looking for somebody to follow their band, so to speak, that way we call them, I guess, what, a groupie? A groupie runs around following the band? That's a whole, whole different gig than Join in the band. This is what Jesus is telling us here. He says, you know what? 
join me. And that's a good thing because that's what Jesus wants you guys to do this morning. Jesus wants you to do more than just follow him. He wants you to join him. There's a big difference, a huge difference. Now, turn back over to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew 10, verse 1. Matthew obviously is in the New Testament. Uh, one time I was just having one of those moods, and I said, Matthew is right after Revelation. <laughs> and I was got these poor truck drivers, you should have seen it. I mean, they're like all over the place. Ask, hey, do you guys have another Bible over there? No, I'm sorry. It's, it's, Matthew is actually the first book in the New Testament, so. Uh, they found it. But anyway, Matthew chapter 10, <laughs> verse 1, he says, And when he had called his 12 disciples. Notice what he does here first. What does he do? He calls you. Well, people go, well, how does God call you? Does he pick up the phone? Does he send you a note? Does he send you an email? No, he calls us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit's job. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict us, to call us. It drives us to him. You know, I've said this many times. Um, we have, a, in our chapel, we have a little cross there. And, and I tell the drivers, I says, you know, the Holy Spirit is actually gonna draw you to him. The Holy Spirit is gonna convict you because that's his job. See, because what does conviction do? Convicts you, pulls you towards the cross. Condemnation takes you away from the cross. So Jesus is, no, no, number one, Jesus is not here to condemn anybody. You know, sometimes you go, oh, I don't want to go to church because all the pastor does is he starts preaching that stuff. And man, I just feel so condemned. No. That's the holy thing. You know, that's Satan, by the way. He does all the condemnation. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, convicts us. That's a good thing. So look what he does here. First of all, he calls his 12 disciples. Then what does he do next? Notice what he does. He gives them power. Power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. I like this word power here. It's the word dudamus. You know, we've probably heard the word dynamite. That's where the word dynamite comes from. It comes from the word dudamus. And he gives you that dudamus power. Now, it's not the kind that uh, um, Samson had. I mean, Samson had a different kind of power. Uh, he had a physical power. And God gave him that for a reason. But the power he's talking about here is a dudamus power. I, I like this, uh, this song that they were, talking, uh, they were singing this morning about, you know, sometimes we're, as Christians, we feel embarrassed. I don't, I don't know why we do, but sometimes we feel embarrassed to, somebody goes, oh, you're a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah. Uh, what's up with this? I mean, you know, not to get around with a hat on, it says, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. Um, you know, they should know that by our love one for another, right? But if we have a tendency to want to just kind of shy away when people go, oh, are you a Christian? Look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how to get over that real quick. Get you one of these shirts, put your name on there, and just walk around, walk around Walmart just for a little while. <laughs> Watch what happens. Some people are going to embrace you. Some people are going to think you've got a plague. I'm not kidding. I've seen people who come in, they'll look at their shirt, and they're just like, and I'm over here doing this and this, and all of a sudden I realize, oh, yeah, I got the shirt on. It, look, it's, if they knew me, I think they go, yeah, that guy's all right. But you see, it's not me. It's not you. What is it? It's what's in you. It's who you represent. So you're going to need this power. You're going to need this dudamus power. If you don't have it, ask for it. Say, Lord, would you give me that dudamus power that you gave these guys here? Then he goes on, and he says, verse 2, Now the names of the twelve apostles are, first, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labibas, I think that's his name, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, this word apostle, this is interesting. This is actually the first time and the only time Matthew even uses this word, apostle. Which is kind of interesting because it's used, I think it's uh, 
It's used like 72 times in the New Testament, the word apostle, but this is the only time he actually uses it. Now, the word apostle is a great word, 79 times it's used in the New Testament. The word apostle means one commissioned by another to represent him in some way, especially a man sent out by Jesus Christ himself to preach the gospel. Uh, Paul called himself an apostle to the Gentiles in Romans. Now, you're going to wonder, well, what's the difference between an apostle and a disciple? Because in verse 1, he says he called his 12 disciples. Well, you know, we are all disciples if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The word disciple is, it's a great word in the Greek. It means the mental effort needed to think something through. It means a learner, a disciple, a follower of Christ who learns the doctrines of Scripture and the lifestyle. So if you're a follower of Jesus, guess what? You're a disciple. Then he goes on in verse 5. He says, these 12, Jesus what? Here's the second part. He sent them out. Now, this is, this is the best part of being a Christian, for me, is being sent out. This is what Jesus talked about, about the Great Commission. The Great Commission. You know, you can do the Great Commission right where you live, right where you work, right in your own home. You know, a lot of people think, well, I thought a disciple is somebody that gets behind, which I call this is God's office right here, um, a disciple is somebody who gets up behind a pulpit and preaches the word of God. It's part of it. But you can be a disciple in your own home, especially in your workplace. We need more disciples. Disciples are very important. I don't know about you, but somebody probably either brought you here, somebody has been praying for you, and that's what disciples do. They pray for one another. So then he goes on, and he says, this is always fun. He says, then Jesus, then the 12 Jesus sent out, and then what did he do? He commanded them. This is a commandment. He commanded them, saying, do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the city of the Samaritans. I thought this was pretty interesting. What he wanted to do was actually go to the Jewish people first. You know, Christ was a Jew, and he came to teach the Jew first. Well, we know what happened. The Jews turned him away, so he ended up going to the Gentiles, which is a good thing, because uh, that's who we are. We are Gentiles. But again, if you're a born-again Christian this morning, and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are a spiritual Jew. Is what we're called grafted in. You know, they could do that. I'm not a real good farmer. Actually, my wife is, uh, is I would call, say, the farmer, so to speak. Uh, she started up her, her little garden. This thing is going crazy now. It's awesome. But uh, from what I understand, you can take a vine, and you can take a branch from a vine, and I think you can graft it into the vine, and it'll actually grow. Well, this is kind of like we are. We are like grafted in, if you will. It's pretty awesome. So then he goes on, and he says, look what he's going to do. He says, so he commanded them, first of all, don't go to the Gentiles, but look what he says in verse 7. He says, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom is at hand. Now, I don't know about you, but before I became a Christian, that's the last thing I wanted to hear, is somebody preaching. I mean, how many times do you tell somebody, hey, like, don't preach to me. I mean, even if they're not talking about the gospel. Uh, they're just talking about anything. And we like to use that analogy. Hey, uh, don't preach to me. Uh, that's what preachers do. But you know what's interesting? What the word preach means here? It's the word to announce. Announce. It means a message publicly. Announce a message publicly and with conviction. That's what the word preach means. So next time somebody goes, hey, are you a preacher? Well, not really, but uh, I, I'm, I do want to announce something to you, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what he wants us to do. That is what a disciple does. Remember, you're a disciple this morning if you've accepted Christ. So then he goes on. Again, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. And look what he says here. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, 
cast out demons, freely you have received, freely you give. Now, is everybody going to have these gifts? Huh? I don't know about everybody, but I do believe that God gives people some of the gifts of healing. Not everybody's going to be healed, by the way. Uh, I know there's a doctrine going around, well, you know, if, you don't, if you're not healed, brother, then you just don't have enough faith. Well, obviously, we know that's not true. But some people do have that healing. Now, this part here in verse 9, he says, Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now, this is pretty interesting. I, I like this. Basically, what is he saying is that you're going to go out and you're going to preach the word of God, and you're going to let God take care of you. You know, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 26, it says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Well, like I said, when I saw that, I thought, wow, Lord, that's awesome. I fit right in there. I mean, here's this poor guy, ex-drug addict, if you will, um, never graduated from high school. And I thought, Lord, how can you use me? And he reminds us, you know, um, well, first of all, he doesn't call the equipped, does he? If you're feeling this morning, you go, you know what? I would really like to do some kind of ministry. But, you know, I just don't feel equipped. Well, guess what? Welcome aboard. What does he do? He doesn't, he equips the call. Right? Does that make sense? He equips the call. He doesn't wait for you to be equipped. If that's the case, huh, guess what? None of us would be, we, we wouldn't do anything. We, we'd, we'd wait until we're equipped. No, you jump in and then he'll equip you. Uh, what Jesus is also saying here is that we should minister to those who, to, who take care of the word of God. Let's read it again here. He says, first of all, provide neither gold nor tunic nor copper in your money belts nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Bottom line here, take care of your pastors. They have given up everything to do what God's called them to do. And this is what uh, Jesus is telling his disciples here. You go out and you teach the word. Don't worry about taking two pairs of shoes. Don't take some extra money with you. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. How does he do that? He does it through the people. I can remember when me and Susan first got uh, called into full-time ministry. It had been about six years now. And I was in the business world for over 20 years. And um, I can remember uh, when we got called in, the first thing Susan said was, uh, well, what are we going to do for money? I said, that's a great question. I don't know. No, I do know, actually. I said, God will provide. God will provide. And uh, the funny, the interesting part was she goes, well, you know, Michael, really, all we, the bottom line is, is, you know, we've had all this stuff, but when it really comes right down to it, really, all we need is a roof overhead and food. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like I'm starving, am I? <laughs> and... Um, you know what's interesting is that, like, Pastor, we got plenty of food. I didn't realize when we went into the uh, uh, ministry that we were going to get tons of food. The driver's dropping off. No, nothing wrong with it. It's actually better food than you actually get at the store when you think about it because the truck driver has to take it to the store, then the store puts it out there, and then it sits there for a little while, then you buy it. We get it before it even gets to the store. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that they got too much of it. So, again, God provides. And that's what he's doing here. I know sometimes, I know me and Pastor Dan have had this conversation, is, man, we're having a lean month today. But I'm not starving. I'm not starving. But see, the bottom line is, is Jesus telling us as disciples, as preachers of the word of God, that when you go out and do God's work, God will take care of you. And then he goes on to verse 11. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is, who is in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go out into a household, greet it. This is interesting here, verse 13. 
If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that city or house, shake off the dust from your feet. Interesting. Look, not everybody you're going to talk to is going to be excited about hearing the word of God. I mean, you probably know that by now. People just don't want to hear it. But you see, it's not our job to be concerned about who wants to hear it and who doesn't want to hear it. Our job is to share the gospel. That's why the Bible says we need to be ready in and out of season. In other words, sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. I know sometimes I get up and me and Susan, we, we'll be like, oh man, today would be just like a good day just to just stay home. But you know, we just know, look, this is what we've called to do. I'm sure you do the same thing when you get up to, you, get, you know, you got a real job and you're going, oh man, this would be a good day just to stay in bed. But you know, if you don't, you're gonna be fired because you gotta get up and go work so you can get your, uh, pay, uh, pay for your, uh, all your food and all that good stuff. Then he goes on in verse uh, 15. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, it would be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. What is he talking about here? He was saying that when they go out and preach the word, he said Sodom and Gomorrah have a better chance, if you will, on the day of judgment for these people that you went and shared the gospel with and they say no. Well, why is that? Because Sodom, if you notice, when you read Sodom and Gomorrah, it doesn't say anything that they ever, they ever had the gospel preached to them. The reason that place got burnt to a crisp is because how wicked it was. It was never preached the gospel. So he was saying, when you go out and, and preach the gospel and they say no, remember, not to you and me, but to Jesus, God help them on judgment day. So now he's, he's, he's called them, he's equipping them. Now he does something really interesting. And I could never understand this until I got into ministry. Well, what's that, Michael? What he, did, what he does next, he prepares them. Are you ready for this? Because it works for you too. Persecution. Ah, oh, no way. I don't want none of this. Persecution. See, I can remember when I got called into ministry, I was, I'm not kidding, I couldn't stop crying. You think I'm really weird, huh? But I couldn't stop crying for two weeks. As God is my witness, my son would call me, how you doing, Dad? <laughs> I can't believe God's using me. No, I mean, but I was real tears in. God, I couldn't believe, I can't believe God's using me. For two weeks, I couldn't stop crying. Now I cry sometimes for a different reason. But, um, Lord, I can't believe I got to put up with these guys like this. They, 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 they leave pee bottles on my, do they do, do, they do that here, Pastor Dad? Do you get a bottle of pee on your desk? I mean, on your, not on your desk, on your, by your door. I do. A great place to be, let me tell you. Now, if God would have told me ahead of time, Michael, it's going to be okay. Uh, there's some crazy things going to happen down there. There's some interesting people are going to come in. They're going to leave a little excess on your front door you're not going to be crazy about. I'd probably say, you know what, Lord? I think I'll just stay right where I am. But he doesn't do that, does he? Because isn't Timothy saying? that you will have challenges in your life, in your ministry, you will have temptations, you will have all this stuff. That's just part of ministry. That's just part of life. But when you get in the ministry, it just seems like it doubles up. But so anyway, look what he does here. Then he goes on to verse 16 and he says, now after he's told him, look, I'm gonna equip you, you're gonna go out and heal the sick. Um, you know, don't worry about your food, it's all gonna be taken care of. Um, then all of a sudden he just, turns a whole new chapter and goes, by the way, in verse 16, behold, <laughs> I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Ay, ay, ay. Oh boy, here we go. Hmm. Well, let's read a little bit farther. Because then after that, if that wasn't enough, he goes, oh, by the way, beware of men. I guess you women are, are, not, are in this, so I guess it's the guys we gotta watch out for. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. And then after that, 
You'll be brought up before governors and kings for my sake and as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, interesting, but the Holy Spirit, capital S, but the Holy Spirit of your Father who speaks in you, or I like the Greek better, through you. Hmm, interesting. So he's kind of, he, he, he's giving you the warning. You're going to go out. You're going to do the work. But by the way, you're going to have these wolves in sheep's clothing. And uh, these guys are ravenous. You know, Matthew 7, 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And they come in, you know, they come in all different sizes. Uh, they come in all different uh, um, situations. We've had them come in with a chapel with just so off-the-wall doctrine. I mean, those guys are easy to pick out. I mean, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, you can catch those. It's real easy. It's the ones that come in that looking like a little sheep. And they want to come in there and just uh, just take advantage of everything you do have. You know what's interesting, too, when he talks about sheep's and wolf clothing? You ever look at a, a sheep's mouth or teeth? They really don't have any top teeth. They have bottom teeth, not like a wolf. Uh, have you ever seen a wolf's teeth? I mean, man, they'll rip you up and spit you out before you even have a chance to go, bang. <laughs> a sheep, on the other hand, what do they do? They, they're different. They don't chew their food, do they? They don't have teeth. They don't need teeth to chew their food. They don't eat. If you notice what they eat, they don't eat meat. The wolf likes to eat the meat. What does he like to do? The, 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 the little lamby? He like, you ever seen a guy with no teeth chew his food? It's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, we have a guy, I love this guy. He always likes to take us out for lunch. I have more fun watching him chew his food. He gums his food. Well, that's how sheep are. Sheep, sheep gum their food. They don't need teeth. But what he says here, he says, you're going to have wolves that come in and spiritually chew you up with their teeth. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're ravenous. You know what the word ravenous means? It means to snatch up Suddenly and decisively, like someone seizing a bounty, a spoil, a prize, to take by an open display of force, not coveted or not secretly. That's what these guys are going to do. You've got to watch these guys. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you should feel safe in here. I feel safe in here. I, I love Pastor Dan and Lois. They're great people. And um, so, you know, you come to church and you, you, you should feel safe. But I got a little secret. Guess who else comes to church? He's probably sitting right here right now. You can't even see him. Satan. Some people think, oh, this is a holy place. Well, of course it is. Why, why wouldn't you think Satan would want to be here? He loves holy places. But he comes in differently sometimes. He'll come in with one of his buddies, a wolf in a sheep's clothing. Well, what do they do? They call secret meetings. They gain the trust of folks, and then they rise up and attack them and chew them up. You might have even had one in here at one time. Hopefully they're gone. I like what Clark said. He says, teachers who preach for hire having no motive to enter into the ministry, but to get a living, as it is ominously called by some. However, they may bear the garb and appearance of the innocent, useful sheep. But this is the true pastors commissioned by the Lord Jesus or to whatever name, class or party they may belong, are in the sight of the heart searching God, no other than ravenous wolves, who designed to feed themselves with the fat and clothe themselves with the, uh, with the fleece and thus ruin instead of save the flock. You, look, you don't have to worry about that here. You guys are safe here. But how do you guard yourself against a false prophet? 
I'm not talking about sometimes within the church, although they're in the church. Also outside the church. People at your job. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm a Christian, man. I just can't wait for you to just to come in late. Hey, how you doing, brother? Two minutes later, I tell him about, hey, this guy here. How will you know? This is how you know. We need to be fruit inspectors. See, aren't we taught, we're, we're so taught to, now just don't bother people, just, you know, they call themselves a Christian, just say, oh, praise the Lord. Come into my church, come into my house, come into my life. We need to be fruit inspectors. You know, my, my wife does most of the shopping. Uh, I, I just push the cart. <laughs> I love watching her shop, especially when it comes to picking out watermelons. You, ever, you, you know, you ever, you ever seen people do this? It, it is my wife. Hi, babes. Um, she'll pick up a watermelon, usually bigger than herself, and she's over there trying to hold this thing, and she starts wailing on that thing. I mean, it looks like to me she is anyway. I'm going, wow. I thought she was mad at me or something. She's wailing on the water. When it was bam, bam, bam. Honey, what are you doing? Come here, Michael, listen. Bam, bam. What the heck is that about? That's how you check the watermelon. I'm being a fruit inspector. Well, not a sin sniffer. Now, she doesn't pick up the watermelon. I do that. You know, men do that. You notice that? Guys like to sniff. You know, we're sniffers. <laughs> Women are kind of like, you know, they look and they tap it. Well, that's what we need to be like in our spiritual walk. Not sin sniffers, because we all got it. You know, sin means to miss the mark. It's an archery term. We all sin daily. Even Christians sin, except for Manny. No, Manny even sins. But we need to be, we need to be fruit inspectors. That's, that'll, that'll guard you against people that are false prophets. You know, when I was in the business world, I hate to say this, but I'm gonna say it because now I'm out of it and I'm behind the pulpit and we gotta speak the truth from the pulpit. I don't know about you, but you know how many times, I have been burned more by Christians. Huh? All right, let me rephrase that. So-called Christians going to church. I literally see them, I've literally seen them raise their hands and worship God and then take $400,000 out of my pocket. That's when I had money. In the name of Jesus, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Pay attention to them. I want to close with this. But then he says, in verse 7, if that wasn't enough, beware of them, again, because they'll deliver you up as before governors and kings. But let's drop down to verse 20, because here's the most important part. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. That word in in the actual Greek, I like it better. Uh, it's the word through. See, when you and me are sharing the gospel, it's the Holy Spirit that's in you. By the way, you know, if you're wondering, do I have the Holy Spirit? Yes, you have the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in you. In fact, if you read Romans 8 and 9, it's kind of scary because Paul told the Romans, the Italians, he goes, unless or until the Holy Spirit is in you, guess what? You ain't one of his. So what does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit is in you. When you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes. But Michael, I didn't feel anything. Look, Christianity isn't a feeling, okay? It's done by faith. Some days you may not even feel like a Christian. You're thinking, God, don't come today. I just ain't feeling it. <laughs> Welcome to the crowd. It ain't about feelings, thank God, because you ever having a bad, you ever have a bad day? We all have them. Michael, I've been having a bad week. I've been having a bad year. Look, it's okay. We have them. Hurry up and get over it, though, so God can use you. But you're going to have bad days. It's not about feelings. It's about faith. So, again, Jesus is telling us that when you speak, the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. I got a compliment from my, a friend of mine. He says, you know, Michael, when you're in the business, world, you're really all about the money. I said, yeah, we did pretty good, didn't I? He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, but you're sure all about the money. He says, you know what? Um, 
since I've noticed you've been in ministry, I'm going, uh oh, here he comes. He goes, you've really grown in the Lord. That almost got my one eye go, my one good eye going again, because you know that was the biggest compliment. Because um, my church will never be as big as your church. I got a little itty bitty trailer. Sunday we were packed. It was awesome. We get standing room only. That's because it's Easter. They call them a uh, like, uh, Christ. What do they call them? people go to Easter and Christmas? Uh, anyway, there's a name for them, but. Um, Creasters. The Creasters came on Easter. Creasters are people who go to church on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> Call them Creasters. So anyway, we had a packed house. So in fact, Susan, she's so cute. She goes, how many Creasters do we hear to have today? And, you know, they're all like, whoa. So she had to tell them. But, um, you know, I'll never have a big church. And that's cool with me because, you know, I, I think sometimes you have the temptation. You, you want to be big. Well, it ain't about big, you know. I understand the bigger the church, the more things you can do. I also think the more headaches you have, too. Um, but it's really all about one person at a time, one soul at a time. And um, so I appreciated that when the guy told me. He says, you know what, Michael, you have grown. And, you know, that's my question to you this morning. How long have you been a Christian? How much have you grown? Look to when the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior to, to, to today. Are you still that little baby in the cradle going, man, give me some more milk? Or are you a grown spiritual person that's now just chewing on meat and should be given Bible studies? Should be out teaching the word of God? Because you've been, you've been, I mean, God has given you so much, you have grown so much that now God goes, okay, you're ready. You're definitely set. Pastor, Pastor Dan has fed you so well here spiritually. So now you're ready. Now you're set. What are you waiting for? Go. Let's go. Let's go. Lord. We are ready. We are set, and we are ready to go. Isaiah says, send me. I'll go. And I, I love it, because I don't read anywhere. Isaiah said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite ready. I don't feel ready. Um, I'm not equipped. Um, but Lord, it's awesome, because you don't equip the call. You equipped us as we go. So let's not wait, Lord, to be equipped. Help us, Lord, as we're going out there to keep equipping us, keep filling us with the word of God. You know what it talks about, Lord, in, um, I think it's uh, Psalms 90, verse 10, that the average person is going to live to be 70 and, 80 by the grace of God if we're in good health. And then we turn around, we read that a thousand years here on earth is only a day in heaven. And we get so caught up. And I know, I know we're all guilty for this. It was, we get so caught up with just doing stuff and try and get as much stuff as we can in our 10 bedroom house or our one bedroom house or whatever we have. And it's, it's almost like we got this Whoever dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> and, you know, Lord, help us to kind of, it's okay to have stuff. Nothing wrong with it. But, Lord, help us to focus on get ready, get set, and let's go do your job. Let's go do your work, I should say. Lord, you filled us. Now use us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Real quick, if you're here t uh, this morning, and this is, I just do this by habit because um, the truck stop every day. We have services every night, at seven o'clock, and every day somebody new walks in. We have, a whole new, we have a whole new group every Sunday, every day. So I always have to make sure that when they leave there that they know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I see a lot of halos flying around here, so you're probably all safe, but just in case. Just in case. If you're here this morning, if you've never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is how we do it at the truck stop. It's real um, in your face. <laughs> it's hell without him. 
It really is. It's hell without him. So if you're here this morning, if you've never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we always like to give that opportunity. Uh, so if you would like to accept Christ and you never have, uh, raise your hand if that's you this morning, and we would love to pray with you. It's just a real simple prayer, asking Christ to come in their heart. I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to go ahead and let the band uh, close out in a song, and then we'll give you time to think about it just in case. Because, you know, there's a lot of, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Um, I like to go to Subway because I don't have to tip, and I like their sandwiches. <laughs> but that doesn't make me a, a Subway sandwich just because I go into the Subway. No more than going to church makes you a Christian. So I just want to make sure you understand that, which I'm sure you do, but I always like to make sure. And there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. A holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. He is with her at the break of day. We fall down and worship the King. We fall down and worship the Lord Immortal. And God is our refuge and strength. Help, we will not fear. Though the earth may give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, still we will fall down and worship oh, the King. Fall down and worship the Lord immortal, King, Son, and God immortal, King, Son, and God. by Don Francisco it goes uh, I gotta tell somebody I gotta tell somebody what Jesus has done for me you know what we all need to do that share your faith tell somebody 
what Jesus has done for me. So my prayer this morning is I pray that I see you at the Bema Sea and not the White Throne Judgment. Because if I see it, well, I won't see it at the White Throne Judgment because I won't be there. But, uh, you know, not the White Throne Judgment. You know, everybody is going to heaven, by the way. Don't let people say, oh, not everybody's going to heaven. No, everybody is going to heaven. But not everybody's going to stay. We're all going to go either the White Throne or the Bema Sea. If you go to the White Throne, you missed it. What'd you miss? You missed Christ. You got religion. A lot of people have religion. Big difference. It's all about Christ. So real quick, anybody here this morning never accepted Christ? Awesome. You guys want to hear one more? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go for it, uh, brother. Let's do uh, Foot of the Cross. Happy song? Yeah, hey, we'll do the happy song. <laughs> okay, let's stand and clap. We'll have a happy song. You got to clap, though. You got to involve. Oh, uh... You know, uh, since he asked, said, you know, he'd like to keep us here, we can't stay, but if you want to take a little piece of us with you, there's some CDs in the back after. This is an interesting if you're interested. You got to get him clapping, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll look, yeah. Ready? <laughs> Go ahead. One, two, three, four. Would you lose your sorrow? Take it to the foot of the cross Would you drown your cares Take it to the Lord through your prayers Stand at the crossroads and ask for the ancient past And I square the good ways And I know it's at the foot of the cross The foot of the cross The foot of the cross is where The foot of the cross Would you wash your sins Those scarlet red and full of tears and pain Plunge yourself into the ocean Of his love and be clean I'm at the foot of the cross the hood of the cross is where my burden lies the hood of the cross is where I live knowing when I die I will pass by the foot of the cross Cross. The foot of the cross is where my burden lies. The foot of the cross is where I live. Oh, and when I die, I will pass by. Cause when I die, I will pass by. Cause when I die, I will pass by. 
the foot of the cross Foot of the cross Foot of the cross Thank you, you guys have a blessed day.